Okay, welcome to lesson one. This is the most important lesson that you're going to get, the mechanism and the basic science behind the program. Most people tend to think that the body is separated. You have your brain, you have your digestive tract, you have your adrenal glands, your thyroid glands, the gonads, or other endocrine organs, the muscle, the fascia, the joints. They see all these as separated. If something's going on with your brain, it's seen to be in the brain by itself. If something's going on in the muscle, it's seen as a muscle problem. If something's going on in the digestive tract, it's seen as a digestive tract problem. And this is the way medicine has viewed conditions for much of its history. The fact of the matter is that science has told us otherwise, that the brain is connected to your digestive tract and vice versa. The endocrine organs are connected to your brain, which is also connected to your digestive tract. The muscles communicate with the digestive tract as well, releasing signals to and from. Muscle talks to the brain. Fascia, the connective tissue overlapping all of our muscles, also talks back and forth to all these different things. And so when you look at this system in the body, you need to think of it as a full system. It's almost like a web, like a spider's web. We call this the neuroendocrine immune system. You even can call it the neuromusculoskeletal endocrine immune system. In other words, there really is no separation in the body. All of these things together are communicating. So if you have one problem in one area, such as the digestive tract, you can change the entire system. Think about this like a spider web. If you break one part of a spider web, what happens to the web? The whole thing changes shape, doesn't it? So that's the first thing you need to understand as we embark on this program that we're going to be doing interventions maybe in one place, but they will be impacting things in other areas. If you're focusing on the digestive tract, for example, it can have symptoms in the muscle and the joints and the fascia, and this is what we're going to be doing. Here's your brain your gut, your muscle, and your joints. These are the major areas that are going to be impacted in this particular program. So let's talk about what goes on with the major mechanism and what can go wrong. The immune system is also involved here. The first thing you need to understand is that when you eat fat, high fat diets such as the modern western diet and you eat the wrong types of foods such as high amounts of sugar and starch as well as fat the sugar and starch will create bacteria that shed lps think of lps as like these little coats that the bacteria wear and when the bacteria die this lps coat lipopolysaccharide coat comes off and gets absorbed by the fat because the lps likes fat now, the interesting thing about LPS or lipopolysaccharide is it is highly toxic to the human system. We call it an endotoxin. And this can then pass and impact the brain, pass and impact the muscles, joints, and immune system. In other words, this happens when you have this high amount of the wrong bacteria producing LPS and high amounts of fat that pull the LPS across the body and then cause immune and inflammatory reactions in all the other areas. Now, it's important you understand that this is very different than food allergy and leaky gut. Food allergy certainly can impact the immune system, right? But this LPS phenomena, what we call metabolic endotoxemia, can occur whether there's leaky gut or not. And that's important to understand. Now, here is the problem. This is a bacteria holding some french fries specifically to let you understand that this concept of LPS, maybe the hairs on this bacteria, this is what is released that triggers the immune system. So the major thing that you need to understand is this is not about some of the things you may have heard. This isn't about a high fat diet and a low carb diet. This isn't about vegetarian diets instead of you know lack of meat eating diets. This isn't just about leaky gut and all these things you've heard. It's really about this combination of the wrong bacteria overgrowing, releasing this LPS and getting carried into the system with high amounts of fat. Now you're gonna learn how to address this, but I want to make sure you understand this isn't just about cutting out fat. This also isn't about going low carbohydrate. This is about doing things in a very specific way to address the problem in sequential order. It's very important you understand this basic science in this way. Metabolic endotoxemia is the underlying issue that is causing many hidden reactions in individuals. This LPS molecule, 
begins to attract immune cells. These immune cells then send out inflammatory signals and you can have pain in your joints. You can stir up autoimmune conditions. You can have digestive upset. You can have any number of signs and symptoms that you may not have been aware of and that are being triggered by this LPS metabolic endotoxemia phenomena. So the first thing we need to do is deal with this right off the bat. Here's how this works again. The LPS is taken away from the bacteria typically when it dies and it hitches a ride on the fat cell. Once that fat cell gets into the bloodstream, the immune system picks up that LPS is there and there is an immune response. That immune response causes the metabolism to react and you get endocrine dysfunction, dysfunction in your hormonal system. You can get joint pain, autoimmune reactions and fatigue. And so especially individuals who are dealing with this wide array of symptoms unknown to them, especially symptoms that fluctuate. Sometimes you feel good, sometimes you feel bad, but they span many different areas. You can pretty much guess that either metabolic endotoxemia is either contributing to your issues or causative of your issues. Here it is again. So what are we going to do to address this? Well, we got to be very sequential. First, we're going to use diet to stop the LPS and fat issue from happening so that we can keep less LPS from forming by cutting down on the amount of bacteria that produce LPS, making sure the fat doesn't absorb LPS. We're also going to have an issue where we use probiotics to change the amount of bacteria to decrease the LPS phenomena as well. We can also use glutamine, which is going to block the ability for LPS to get into the system. We're going to use enzymes because certainly food allergies can play a role. And we're going to use other things like curcumin and bromelain to work right at the organ systems to help the joints, to help the muscles, and also to work with glutamine to keep the digestive tract from allowing these compounds to pass.